and asked Brother Jack to boil porridge. Because I didn't love porridge because I didn't say black pop kill people, so I didn't love it. So Brother Jack didn't boil it as properly as she. So when she come now, she asks if be drink any porridge, Brother Jack said, no, be not drinking. And the other day she boiled a big pot and give me one to drink it. And I have to drink it up when I don't have wet. Oh my, that lady was so pleasant. She's a good mother. Man, she loving so tell. I love that woman so tell. She said I was a very, very good mother. I don't know much about her because she died when I was pretty young. But the little I know about her, oh my God, I can't even explain it. The Reverend Henry was persecuted in Jamaica because of the stand that he took against the churches and because of the lying traditional doctrine that they preach to the people. And they charged him for lunacy, but after testing him, they found that he was in his perfect senses, so they freed him. A couple of years after he left for the United States because he saw that he had too many enemies in Jamaica. And he spent 12 years there. And at the end of the 12 years, an angel appeared unto him and directed him, saying, go back to Jamaica and finish your work. He did not want to come, knowing that he did not have many friends here. But the angel insisted on him. He asked the angel, oh, why are you sending me back to Jamaica? Like you sent Moses into Egypt to deliver Israel? The angel said, yes. He said to the angel, what is my marching order? The angel did not answer him, but turned his back on him. He said to the angel, when you sent Moses to Egypt, you gave him a marching order saying, I am the I am. What is my marching order? The angel turned around to him and said, All power is given unto you, both in heaven and in earth, and what you bound and hurt is bound in heaven, and what you loose and hurt is loose in heaven. And God has given you a new name. See Isaiah 45. And on your way to Jamaica, Go by the way of Cleveland and be ordained for the ministry. He asked the angel, how many days do I have left in the United States? He said, nine. Well, he obeyed. And the angel said to him, and a woman is in Jamaica providing for you. So when he came to Jamaica, he was searching around for some suitable place to start his work. And to everywhere he went, they didn't accept him. And this noble woman, Miss Edna Fisher, heard about this man. And she said, I want to meet this man. And when she met the man, and she heard the man speak, she said to him, Sir, I have a little room and a house that I built for myself. And if you will accept it, you can have it and stay there as long as you want. And he accepted the offer and Miss Edna Fisher took him in. And he lived there until the government of Jamaica arrested him and arrested Mrs. Henry, the um, sister Edna, and from there they went to prison. And after coming out of prison, he took her as his wife and married her, and they started to establish God's kingdom, and that did not please the government of Jamaica. So they started to seek ways of getting them apart, and she now, at that time, Mistress Edna Fisher, she was murdered by political thugs. And then, from there, it left her rent alone to continue. It was she who took five pounds of flour and started 
to make bread until it came to a bakery, it turned out to a bakery having six, seven bread vans and bread going all over the island. The one of the most permanent bakery in Jamaica at the time, the Peacemakers Bakery. And now, a few years before the Reverend Claudius when he left us, he told us that the place here was going to break down. He said it was going to break down that people will pass and see it and say it will never come back. But he said a man would be coming up and find like a heap of, like a man burn a heap of fire and a live fire coal is left under it and that man is going to come and brush off that ashes and see the little coal and then he will break little brambles and throw on it where you see little smoke coming up and there will be another springing of this organization. So we waited to see his fulfillment because we see other things that he prophesied fulfilled. First of all, he told us that when he left us, the first thing he was going to do is to free Nelson Mandela. And he did it. Secondly, he said he promised the, the PNP government a, a woman prime minister and we saw it, and we said, he said, he's going to put a black man in the White House in America, and we see it, and he did it. So then, we waited to see who would come along and brush off that, hashes off that coal. And lo and behold, a man came who claims himself to be Mistress Henry, Edna Henry's nephew, and he came and spoke with the caretaker of the place, Mr. Brother Cleston Thompson. And immediately, immediately his heart opened up to the man and we took him in. And now he is doing all that lies in power to revitalize this work and bring it up to light that, had, that people can see it again and make their own decision. I thank you. I am Sister Bonnie. I am holding this picture of Sister Edna, whom I knew from I was young. About 20 years young at the time when I knew her. And oh, this lady, she was such a person, a good, I can't even find words to tell you how much this woman cared for each and every one that has come in our path. She was the backbone of the Reverend Henry. She stand behind him and beside him all the way until she was taken away in an awful way. We missed her. She was the mother of all mothers. She loved everyone's child. And she always tell the mothers not to beat their children when they are in public. Wait until them reach home. Whatever they do, wait until they reach home. Then them can kill them that time, but not in public, because she don't love to see that. And she always in the bakery. I was in the bread shop and she said, Give the broke bread to your children. Is Israel food? Give it to them. And I always do it. Because everybody always come and ask you a piece of broke bread. For well, that was what Sister Edna wanted. She was such a person. She didn't love to see anybody hungry. She always put on her bib 
and get round with the food. And anybody come can get food from Sister Ed. Yes. I loved her because she was a mother. I loved the Reverend Henry because I didn't know a father. I grew up without a father, with just a mother. And he was a father, a brother, and a brethren to me. My father died when I was three months old. And from thence, knowing the Reverend Henry and Sister Edna, one night I was going to have a bath at the pump down by Kemsil, and a truck was passing by, and they flung a stone from the truck, and it hit me on my mouth, and hit all three of my teeth, and I was standing there, nobody didn't know until when they reach a part of the way and they look and didn't see me and they realized something had wrong with me and when they turn back they find me standing with my hands holding my mouth they took me to the hospital and they stitch my lips i got three stitches in the top lip and two in the bottom lip. And the following day, Sister Edna came, she and Reverend Henry, and she took me home to Kingston with her. And there, I stayed with her for two weeks. When I had was to go back to the hospital to take the stitches out. And she treated me like a baby. And she took me to the dentist following my recovery. And she got tooth from me. And one morning while I was sitting around the table to have my breakfast. And porridge was one of the, the, the meal on the table. I didn't like porridge. <laughs> and she said to me, when everybody eat, she look around and she see my porridge and she says, Sister Bunny, you don't want the porridge. I said, no, Sister Edna, I don't love porridge. She said, you're going to drink it this morning. Oh. And she told Sister Hannah to put it up for a little later. And I had words to drink it. She didn't ask any question. I had words to drink it. So, I know that Sister Edna was a mother, and a mother indeed, and I loved her well. Thank you. I um, said, Brother Gray, what I have within myself to say about the Reverend C.V. Henry as the prophet of God. It is so deep. It is so deep. Nevertheless, I will say what I have to say briefly. When the Reverend C.V. Henry came to us, as our brother, rightly say our brother, Gordon, rightly say a while ago, And he came from America to Jamaica and was accommodated by C. 
Merci, c'est